Well, hello folks, I'm L.A. Little, and this is your daily Neo T.A. wrap. We take a look at these markets, and we do it from a neoclassical perspective each time, asking ourselves, what happened today? What does it tell us about the coming ones? Do the show four times a week, every Monday through Thursday. It's broadcast at or before 10 o'clock Eastern Time, archived on YouTube, and it's under the channel L.A. Little. Last night, we were thinking we were going to try to get some sort of a push-up today. That is what we got, but by the end of the day... They give it all back. Russell was a laggard one more time. It's been that way for a while. Uh, and we've got some setups tonight that say uh, we're probably going to get a change in the weather. Overseas, we uh, actually had the DAX get up and hold new highs. The CACs failed on its attempt. Uh, elsewhere, wasn't much happening. A dollar was down was the biggest news today outside of uh of the equity markets uh, that led to a nice pop up in gold oil couldn't get anything out of it but silver did as well let's take a look at these charts because as you know what we're doing here neoclassically is we're looking for areas of significance setting our expectations on what those tests are going to look like and then seeing how it behaves so for example last night we said okay this thing should try to push up Try to get a little bit more follow through off of what we already had. We accept that as our expectation. We see what it does. It gets up. It gets under. Has less volume. That's going to try to come back. And so that's the S&P 500. You got to set up here where it wants to come back. You know where can it come to is the next question. And if we uh, look at that, you know I would say that you got this big bar here, right? There's a good spot on that one. You've got another one here, which is there, right? And then that uh, that other big bar, this one, actually is fairly congruent with that one. So this looks to be the most likely area to try to get a retrace into. Now you do have, you know, this, this little high, kind of the breakdown bar. You could also find support on the top of it on the way back. And so it gives you kind of three measuring ports, uh, points on the way back and kind of basically two zones. We're not talking about a big setback here, but a setback uh, nonetheless. And that, again, is what our expectation is. So what we want to do is we want to see it come back. We want to see it get back into that area, right? Say if we're using this one, get back into that area, find buyers, flip around, get over this, set up another ABCD structure to do what? Take you to the top. And so that's that's the kind of the, you know, how can we get up there? Well, we can set up nested ABCD structures on the way to get us to where we're trying to go. And that's what this one is going to try to do. Uh, that measurement's actually about right up there, which is almost to this one. So a little nested ABCD structure potentially uh, could play out as a result of this. And then if you actually want to go farther with this, right, you could do nested ABCD structures all the way up right one after another right you can see how they just play out one after another that one wasn't quite complete and so forth right if you look at it on a monthly chart right excuse me a weekly chart you can do the same sort of thing right you can say you got an ABCD structure here fairly large one pull back you've almost got a takeaway bar going on here which could take you quite a bit higher and get you way over these highs if in fact that were to play out but that's a long way away even if it's going to happen let's look at uh, the other indexes so do we have you know consistent behavior across the indexes well in fact tonight you do you got the uh, nasdaq composite here 50 78 80 this was the one that was the closest one 57 uh, 50 73 64 so it goes over back under less volume same scenario wants to try and pull back. NDX, same thing, gets over, back under, slightly under, wants to pull back. Russell wasn't even close. Russell uh, just turns, never even gets up, just tries to pull back completely. Russell, again, the weakest one. You want to watch and see how it behaves. You want to watch and see how the strongest ones behave and see what they do. Russell is right here is where I'd be looking, needs to hold that area. That's the indexes. If you look overseas, uh, the picture is a little bit different. And uh, let me pop over there and we'll get that up and take a look at it here. 
We'll start with the cat, uh, the DAX. Uh, the German DAX gets up and over uh, the swing point high, so you get a trend transition or actually re uh, reconfirmation on the upside. And that says, hey, this thing can go higher. Uh, you get over it, you stay over it, barely, but you do stay over it. And you've got a little bit less volume on the try. So slightly less volume, right? Higher price. So that says more than likely you're going to you're going to get an immediate retest, regen. Uh, where can that go to? It would be in that area there. So that's the DAX. If you look at the CACs, CACs argues that you're actually going to get that pullback right away because you get over this bar, which is the 49.37. You trade back underneath it. You have less volume. You're also testing the breakdown bar. That's going to try to come back. That makes me think the DAX is going to come back as well. With the dollar weakness, of course, we got some strength uh, elsewhere. If I pop over to the uh, EEM as a good proxy for Asia, um, most a lot of the emerging markets are in that group. Coming back into the swing point low, so here's the bearish retest regen. You're into it. You're going to test it tonight. Uh, I don't think you're going to get over it probably because you've also got this big bar right over, you know, at the top of it. So you're testing into there. I would expect some sort of a pullback. And if you're going to get a pullback in the emergings, what would be the easiest way to do it? Well, that would be for the dollar to gain strength. Today, the dollar pulls back. doesn't have much volume as it comes back into these big bars. I suspect the dollar is not going to give it up that easy. and It's going to hang up here and maybe get a little bounce uh, come tomorrow. If the dollar bounces, then you expect gold probably to go back the other way. So let's take a look at gold. Gold got a little spike up today, got over this high. But the key thing on gold is the test at the end of the week here. And so tomorrow becomes critical for it. 103.43 is the low. It's trading at 103.56, so just over it. It's not going to have the volume if it gets under it. So even if it gets under it, you would expect some sort of an immediate retest regen. But what you'd really like to see if you're bullish on gold is you'd like to see it hold this low again. That would be two attempts to break it down being unable to do so after a fast move to the downside. So, so you come down fast and then you trade under it, can't hold it. Trade under it, can't hold it, or at least so far. Will it hold tomorrow? If it does, uh, that's a nice bullish scenario uh, for the gold market to get a decent bounce uh, back out of that area. So we'll see if that happens uh, tomorrow. Gold stocks certainly acting like they want to bounce. Uh, they got a nice big spike up out of there yesterday and a continuation today into the bottom of this bar. So I think gold stocks have probably done what they're going to do. It's a question now if gold can actually hold a bounce and and stay over that uh, swing point low on a weekly basis. If we look at the silver, silver gets a pop up, can't hold it. Uh, kind of an ugly close to silver, so nothing sweet there. A uh, quick look at the oil market. The oil market couldn't do anything today either. It's just an inside day. And finally, go over to the bond market, and the bonds actually got a little push up today. And they're back into the swing point low. So the bonds are testing back into bearish retest regens. You actually had one here that it's already gotten over uh, the last couple of days. So now you're into the higher ones. And what does that tell you? Well, it tells you more than likely this market is still in some sort of a sideways trend rather than a downtrend. Just hasn't broken. It's got a break to get the downtrend going again. So, so far, sideways trend on the bond market. And uh, let me see, anything else important? Let's take a quick look over at the uh, sectors. The biggest weakness today in the sectors was in the healthcare. Uh, Aetna had missed their earnings, I believe it was. Uh, got a pretty good push down, and that kind of took that whole sector with it. Uh, the discretionary and the tech have been the leaders. Here's the discretionary. They're pushing into the top of this high. I think they've done uh, what they're going to do. And if we look at technology, so they're probably going to try to come back now. And they also have an over-under. Technology, however, pushes up into this high. Again, Apple was leading the charge. But if you look at Apple, Apple itself has probably done what it's going to do 
on this push into this 119 area. So uh, top here was 119.30, you get to 119.75, you close under it. So to me, that looks like a test failure on Apple as it comes back into this big gap area. So I would expect Apple after a nice 8% spurt, get some sort of a pullback and then try it again. So Apple's not going to help you. Sectors, for the most part, aren't going to help you. Indexes are all saying you probably should pull back. You got a failure on the CACs. The DAX looks like a, 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 an immediate retest regen. Dollar looks like it probably wants to bounce, which is going to hurt the emerging markets. Folks, Friday, good week, pull back. That's it for tonight. Have yourself a great one. Thanks for joining me. I always ask you to help me in the, in the viral sense, right? Spread the word. Let others know about what I do. I think I do a pretty good job for you uh, on a daily basis, giving you a good feel for what's going on in these markets in a 10-minute, 12-minute spurt. If you think others can benefit from it, I certainly can. Let them know. Take care. Have a great one. I'll see you on the weekend. Good night.